Let's get Welcome it. to the first episode of Data Fate and Warren Vintage. The Vintage Train has led us here to a disclosed Goodwill location in Houston, Texas. I am here with the Thrift God. Yes, sir. Thrift Heaven Vintage. We in the building. Paul Cantu <laughs> is in the building. And uh, yeah, we live and direct right here, actually in the thrift store right now, in the Goodwill. And um, uh, Paul, why don't you let people know where you're from and around what time did you start all of this? Yes, sir. So I'm from Lamarck, Texas, 409 Galveston County. Unfortunately, in 2019, man, that's the murder capital of Texas, which is not really a fun fact, but it's factual. Um, I started thrifting in 2012 like consistently so when my sister came back from college we would go like in 09 2010 and then i really picked on up or picked up on it excuse me in uh 2012 because everyone had vintage snapbacks on and i was like yo i need some of those where's the best place to find them live in the thrift live <laughs> nice and um over the time you have uh brought Thrift Heaven Vintage into the scene, and you're now like your website is booming. What, where, how did that come into play? And around what time did you start doing that? All right, man. So a lot of people got the game effed up, man. So a lot of people are <laughs> in it for the money. I never was in it for those purposes. I just wanted to look fresh for less. And by thrifting, you can find those one of one pieces, and it's crazy. It's incredulous. So basically what I would do is I'd go in the store, record videos, because there were thrifters who made videos on YouTube, they all stopped. And that's when I was like, wait, hold up. I gotta pick up the baton where they left off. So I started making videos myself and I passed on items that weren't my size. And then people started hitting me up like, why'd you pass on that? And so I started picking up a few more pieces. People would buy them, but I never was in it for the money in terms of selling clothes. I was in it just to look fresh for myself and to make videos to entertain. And then it kind of snowballed into what it is now. Right, so, absolutely. Yeah, it was never my intent, but it's kind of what it all turned into. Just being and so, motivated and keeping it going and consistent. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then also, man, I started by just grabbing pieces and you know selling here and there through Instagram and then through my email. And and it got like overwhelming with the back and forth, the trades, the pictures, people flaking. So I was like, you know what? I'm cutting Cut, all that out. We're out, making man. a website and uh, cutting out all the fees on like these apps and websites too. Cause I was like, you know what? If we're gonna get to this paper, <laughs> let's do it right. Get let's it. do it right. So yeah, I made my own website and yeah, it's been booming. So we've had the website for four and a half years now. Nice. And uh, it's just on the up and up. So nice, yeah, nice. I'm blessed and uh, privileged to actually be in the position I am doing what I love, which Absolutely. is just being in the trenches as we are now. Exactly, and it is an uh, honor by myself uh, and Data Fader Warren to be able to host this interview here with you. Oh, and stop in, it, Barry. Inside, stop inside it. of the haven where you were hatched. Exactly, <laughs> I was birthed. <laughs> birthed here, right here, live and direct. So, uh, was there anything in particular you was looking for at that time? Oh man, dude, if anyone knows Snapback, so I was in WWVSC, which is Worldwide Vintage Snapback Exchange. Um, that's for the, the the real old heads, bro. Like I was in that Facebook group, and so I would uh, come in the thrifts and just look for like Shark Tooth, Sports Specialty Scripts, Splashes, just all the desired hats, the Diamond Logo Athletic, bro. I would be in here just sifting. And what's crazy is I didn't even like dip my toes into the clothes. I was looking for straight headwear, bro. Like, and that's what's wild. I would walk in, see no hats, be like, dang, and then leave. Then finally, I was like, okay, man, I'm gonna start perusing a little bit more. Yeah. And I would go to garage sales, like antique stores wherever to come up on these like hats and then i started seeing the clothes and i was like lord have mercy they got the heat out here bro it's yeah. time it's time yeah. i just started picking up a little bit of everything so i know you was doing the videos but what what exactly inspired you to keep it going what were they really for you know what were you finding these things for at that time okay so I was finding a lot of things just, again, for the style of it. Just for the style, And, yeah. and to look unique, because in, in the school I grew up in, we had to uh, wear polo shirts. That was our dress code. So five days out the week, I'm wearing just polo shirts. So I was like, man, how will I look like fresh, like on the weekends? And I'm like, let me just grab a couple little things like right. that. So that's pretty much where it started. And then the reason why I continued doing it was because I was just like, man, I found the videos to be entertaining and yeah, interesting, like absolutely. seeing what people found in the thrift. So I'm like, bruh, if they're not making those, I need to make them. Right, so right. yeah, that's why I like did it. And then I did it for about two years, like here and there. 
And then uh, I worked a corporate job an insur- at an insurance company. And I was like, yo, this nine to five in this cubicle, it ain't it, bro. Right, like, yeah. people were just like drones in there. They're just like, Ugh. looking like zombies. So I'm like, nah, bro. Like, I'm right. trying to do something on my own and make it. And that's when I started making like three videos a week, start being consistent and really get into the content. Yeah. So. And, and how long have you had the Thrift Chariot, which we'll see? Oh, about. man. <laughs> <laughs> the thrift cherry baby okay so that's always been my dream car believe it or not and luckily wow. it's a vintage vehicle on the mother freaking budget boy <laughs> so yeah i yeah. got it in 2014 is when i got the first one the, the thrift cherry at one so it was a former police van and it said like it said information and services on the side so i was like i cannot imagine this being a police whip right. like this van so i threw rims on it i had it in college i put in loud speakers so when i opened up the back <laughs> it was just like a giant speaker bro i'd be in my building and you could hear the speakers outside the building like everybody could hear so i was just driving around on dayton's in my chariot and so i had that van for uh two years Unfortunately, it did not pass inspection, and I wasn't riding dirty back then. I was like, whatever. Got a little tired of it, sold it, regretted it, and then I was like, man, let me get another one. So then I picked up the Thrift Chariot 2.0, uh-huh. and that's the one we got right now. The one we got right Ooh, now. It's okay. beautiful, man. And that's been getting you all hey, around, like yes, you're traveling. Hey, or... one one owner, I can fit hella gear in there for the pop up shops. Nice. So yeah, anytime I do data fed and warm, man. The van is packed to the brim Hi. with heat, baby. <laughs> For anybody that don't know, uh, how how old are you? Oh yeah, I'm 300. 300. No, no, no. Keep <laughs> <laughs> playing. I'm a quarter of a century, man. I'm 25 years young. Get it? Nice, nice, nice. How do you choose where you're gonna go on the road? Uh, dude, when I when I'm on the road, I literally would just any town I'm in, church shops, antique shops. I just Google, baby. Google can Google. be your best friend, man. Yeah, so it's right. very helpful. And then sometimes you'll just drive around the town, you'll just see a sign. Like one time I just saw like a lamp and I saw a clothing rack outside. I was like, that looks like a thrift. Busted that Yui. And sure enough, it was. I found a fire nautica jacket in there too. So sometimes it is just having that yeah. peripheral vision, baby. Like I'm just tuned into this shit, bro. While you've been on the road and traveling around, what has been your craziest piece? on the road and do you have a story with finding that crazy piece jeez i don't know man i don't collect clothes i collect pieces bruh and not piece pieces there's just multiple (laughs) heaters that i found i found this crazy looney tunes all embroidered like baseball jacket so i had all the looney tunes just stitched in the back it was nuts I went into an antique shop and found some crazy troll babies i found tyson tees holyfield tees it's just like when you go into that many stores, you're just destined to find something. But what I really like the most is like in the Houston area or in big cities, they kind of know the game, but in these rural areas, they don't. Right, so you can like right. really come up on extremely good deals. Right, like right. they have no clue and it's not like a popular thing. So that's when you can find the steals. Like I'm talking vintage Nike Air Crew necks, all types of accoutrements. Yeah, right. it's amazing. <laughs> And uh, when it does come to vintage, mm. you got your sportswear, you got your sure. band tees. What uh, is your favorite, I guess, genre into this 80s, 90s, early oh, 2000s man. vintage scene? Honestly, I don't really pick favorites. Okay. Um, I don't know if that sounds cliche, but honestly, bro, the one rule in this stuff is if it looks good on you and if you were rocking, then cop it. That's my cop whole it. thing. Yeah. I'm just like, if I like it, I figure someone else will, and so I get it. And that's why sometimes on my site, I'll sell stuff that people don't sell, but people cop. It. Right. Because some people want that unique look. Like right now, this isn't like any real hype. It's just a dope Kooji looking polo. Like that's what it's about. I'm rocking sambas right now, dude. Like I grew up playing soccer in that in that soccer like indoor samba culture. So it's just like right. combining little pieces that you like to create like a dope fit. Yeah. And so honestly, I don't really pick favorites. Obviously, there's stuff that holds value, so you'll get excited about it. But I love anything that's bright, loud, and colorful. Look fresh for less and right. look unique and save money while you're doing it and recycle clothes and save the planet. That's why we're out here doing this. That's why I do it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I try to entertain, but I also like preaching through entertainment in a way. Like, I don't tell people, but you see it and you're like subconsciously motivated by seeing the come ups. You're like, dang, maybe I can do that myself. Right. And you can get a little bit of coin off it as well. So that's right. kind of the thing, just empowering yourself, saving the planet and looking dope. Right. What else do you need? Right. Nothing. <laughs> Let me ask you for a person who's kind of Uh, inspired uh, I'm not gonna even say kind of who is watching your YouTube channels and is inspired by you completely what do you tell a person in those shoes 
um, into the game right now. Yeah, so I was that kid, man. So you gotta be in it for the love of it. I'm in it for the creativity. I went to school for art. I really am an artist, like, true and through. Right, so, right. So, um, yeah, I just say be creative. If you see something or something doesn't exist that you want, make it, find someone to make it. And yeah, just save your money, invest wisely. That's why I do this, man, honestly. It's just like passing on dope stuff, the story, the culture, the history. And at the same time, you know, you yeah. stack up a little bit of bread doing it. So nice. it's a blessing. Uh, Paul, I want to ask you, art does play a fact into the whole thing that you do. And how does that uh, play into vintage and um, as you are an artist as well? Yeah, so being an artist and being a creative, it's like the thrift store is basically just like a honey hole of information and references to draw from. So I'll see just fire pieces and instantly draw inspiration from the colorways, from the designs, and from the graphic nature in and of itself. Right. So basically I'll see these loud, crazy prints and then I'll be like, man, that looks dope, but there's not like Taz dressed up like a Native American chief, so I wanna do that. So I throw that on the back of a jacket. Right. And it's just like, it just really fuels the imagination. Okay. It just sparks that creativity to burn into a fire, you know? And um, I wanna ask a question for the, uh, I guess for more of the people who's watching you. Right now we do know that the scene has changed mm -hmm. um, a bit and how have you adapted to the change um, as you're you know, still progressing? Yeah, so when I first got into this and I was really going hard like in 2012, there was just grails on grails everywhere. Like I would go in the store and just find the craziest stuff. Now things do tend to be a little bit more picked over and I feel like a lot of people are discouraged by that. However, I've seen no difference. Like this last, this last month, I've done the best I've ever done in terms of selling gear and grabbing pieces. It's still so like really it's just like your level of hustle, what, what links you go to to find the stuff. And then ultimately it's like the only thing you can control at the end of the day is yourself. Like I can't control the prices. I can't control what they have. And so that's why like having skills, like artistic skills where I can find just a blank jacket or a blank suitcase, customize it, and then have something that's a one of one and holds value in and of itself that's solely based on me is kind of truly where the value lies. Okay. And so also, man, just social media, just my videos, just everything kind of works in tandem together, baby. It's like two people on that bicycle. Right. Like Working, yeah. making the videos has the audience, the audience cops the clothes, the art fuels the Instagram, the Instagram fuels the viewers, the Instagram fuels people going to my exactly. site. It just, right, everything right. works like is intertwined and connected. So, okay. yeah. I do want to thank the thrift guy Paul Cantu yes, sir. here in his habitat natural. <laughs> um, until the next segment, we are here. Shout out to Paul Cantu, shout out to Thrift Heaven Vintage, shout out to Houston, shout out to Texas, the Vintage Train Station. Until the next one, peace. Hey, you guys know we run a train on the game, baby. <laughs> yeah. Choo choo. <laughs> <laughs>2003, man. I was a little kid. Shout out Rashad Bobineau, man. Uh, went to the University of Texas, man. That was a crazy game, too. Went into triple overtime. Dang. Right. Yep. It's my hometown right there. your boy's concussed. Hey, cop of the day, baby, 1990 bugs.
All right, we're gonna get to know Paul from his taste uh, and the selection point of view, and uh, let's get into his day to fade and worn pieces of uh, well, maybe some stuff that means a little bit to him. And on some Houston shit, we parking lot pimping right now. You did in the thrift chariot <laughs> 2.0. Yes, by the way. sir. Oh, all right. So these are some finds that I got on Sunday. So this isn't like some of the craziest stuff, but these are recent acquisitions. And I do think this is wavy and crazy. It's a little Columbia beautiful vintage sport jacket. So I love the colorway, the embroidery on that little rain stopper hood visor. And then it has a nice little detail right there on the sleeve and the mesh pocket for narcotics. So uh, yeah, dude, this piece is just a dope little jacket. I sculpted it out, they were taxing and I waited a week and got it for half off. So of course that's crazy. Nice. Now you guys know, I love some FUBU. As Big Mo said, F Hill figure FUBU shirt, you dig? So we got some FUBU flavors right now. You got that beautiful icy FUBU baseball jersey right here. It's like dip dye, little gradients. And so you got it in that blueberry and you have it in that banana berry and that banana little banana that little berry. lemon baby a little bit of that little uh gun metal steel you know what i'm saying so i love finding the fubu pieces they're old school very reminiscent of houston and where i grew up i remember substitute teachers on casual friday with rock fubu and i was like bro i need some of that but as a kid i got this zero zero like the bootleg fubu so the bufu i don't even know what i was doing man <laughs> tripping and then we got something for the children you know what i mean I had to get this in case I have an accident. Um, so yeah, I got that Superman jacket right here for when I have a little one. You know what I, you know what I'm saying. So sometimes I just like to stock up on little kids' shoes, accoutrements, and clothing pieces. So those are a couple of the quick and sexy, little tasty, tantalicious finds that I found recently. Uh, yeah, and that's a little different too because uh, we get uh, we're going to do interviews with people that's going to do stuff that means to them. This one exactly is different and I love we doing this with you because this is very recent. We was able to do this into a thrift store and yeah, it brings a com uh, complete vibe. So uh, I appreciate you parking yes, to sir. again for yes, all sir. of this. And uh, till the next time, shout out to Thrift Heaven Vintage. Uh, everything's on the website. ThriftHeavenVintage.com, baby. Okay, yeah. Simple. And um, until then, uh, Houston, shout out to Texas. And most of all, the Vintage Train Station, September 15th. 